Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. My name is Robin and today is a really exciting video because I'm going to be talking about one of my favorite plants and that is calendula. I'm going to be sharing what it is, how to grow it, how to harvest seeds, some of the uses and benefits of the plant and also how to make my calendula balm, which is this here. This is one of my favorite beauty kind of self-care products to use and I absolutely love it. So I really hope you enjoy today's video. If I look a little bit disheveled in this video, that is just because it is super hot right now. Um, we just had a storm go by, but it is just too muggy to be outside. So I'm trying to just cool off a little bit inside, but I am really excited to be talking about this amazing plant. So I pretty much grow it every year in the garden. And I also think I'm gonna grow it every year from now. It grows to about 60 centimeters in height and kind of forms a bushy structure. It's really compact, so it's great for either growing in rows or along borders. And it takes about 70, 80 days, sometimes even less uh, to get full maturity. You get flowers a lot earlier than that as well. And the flowers is pretty much why I grow this plant. The whole plant is edible, um, but I just have a lot of other delicious leafy greens in the garden that I would prefer to eat rather than the leaves of the plant um, but I do grow it for its medicinal purposes for the flowers. In terms of how to grow it it is one of the easiest plants to grow. I really don't do too much to it. It grows well in poor soil so I like to include it in areas that are fairly bare and don't have too much growing. It's a great filler plant throughout the garden and I also like to include it um, around different plants like cucumbers and tomatoes and other plants that require pollinators to fruit. It grows really well in the subtropics in the cooler months. So I grow this over winter and it's really coming to an end now. It just really doesn't like all of this warmer weather. So it's now going to seed. Harvesting the seeds is one of the easiest plants to do so. A lot of flowers have um, more smaller seeds, which are very fiddly to save, but these ones form really large seeds, which clump together really well after the flower blooms. And all you need to do is just leave the flower on the plant. And then you get something that kind of looks like this. I'll put an overlay on the screen of what these look like on the plant and you can trim it off at this level or you can just take the seeds out of the spent flower. And I like to store them pretty much like this uh, and you get quite a lot of seeds in just one seed head. So the plant has been grown for hundreds and hundreds of years. There's records in the middle ages of a lot of people using it to apparently dye butter and cheese, which the orange color, you know, I can understand that. Luckily, we don't need to do that these days, but predominantly it was used for its healing properties, which is the reason why I grow it. So I like to harvest the flowers as they bloom. And the great thing about this plant is that the more flowers you pick, generally the more you get. So what I like to do, and I have some here behind me, as the flowers bloom, I will obviously not take them all because I do love to leave the majority on the plant for pollinators but you get a lot of flowers from just a few plants. <laughs> so what I like to do is I like to dry them just on a rack um, and then I can use them all at the same time to make my calendula balm. Drying these flowers really doesn't take that long um, and they stay pretty much in the same shape and I like to store these just in an airtight container once they're fully dry. In terms of just maintaining your plant, not a lot of bugs will impact the plant, but as it does start to warm up, you might see different caterpillars um, and other aphids on the plant, but that's just natural. And I do like to leave some of these plants in and around the vegetable patch so that all of those bugs are attracted to the calendula because I'm not really eating a lot of the leaves and they tend to leave a lot of the flowers alone. 
rather than going for my tomatoes and cucumbers and all of the other plants in the garden. So as I mentioned before, this is my favorite thing to make with calendula. So I'm going to include a few clips here with a voiceover of exactly how I make my calendula balm. So I hope you enjoy. So to make this calendula balm, you're going to need two parts of calendula oil, one part of beeswax and one part coconut oil. You can also add different essential oils to this mixture. I'm opting for lemon myrtle today. To make the calendula oil is really simple. All you're going to need to do is just pack a jar full of your dried or fresh calendula flowers and then top it up to make sure that all of the flowers are covered with your choice of oil. You can use jojoba oil, coconut oil. I opted for olive oil here just because I know it's really great for my skin type. So that's what I chose today. This in itself makes a gorgeous Christmas present. It's really pretty and is a really gorgeous table decoration. You want to make sure that your jar is completely dry as you don't want any water in this mixture. And then you just let that sit for about four weeks or so to let the oil be infused with all of those gorgeous flowers. To make the calendula balm, once your oil has been sitting in a cool dry place for your four weeks, you're going to take um, your two parts of calendula oil, I'm using half a cup here, so then a quarter of a cup of the other ingredients, and you're going to just put this into a jar and we're going to melt all of this on the stove. I like to use a jar that I don't use for anything else. I keep this in the pantry and this is kind of my calendula balm jar just because when you're working with beeswax, it gets really sticky. So I don't put anything else in this jar. I like to put a cloth or tea towel at the bottom of the pot and that just makes sure the glass isn't touching the very bottom of um, the saucepan when you're melting it. You can also do this in a crock pot as well, um, it's completely up to you. You just want to make sure that the water level is covering all of the oil and beeswax. And then I'm just going to be melting all of this together. Beeswax can take a while to melt as the temperature of the water rises, but it all comes together um, in about 15 minutes or so this took. And then I'm adding uh, my lemon myrtle once everything is all melted and probably adding about 10 drops to this mixture, depending on how strong you'd like the scent. And then when it's still hot, I pour it into my jars, again making sure that they are completely dry. And then once the mixture hardens a little bit, I just like to decorate it with some dried calendula flowers. So I really hope you enjoyed this video and that you learnt a little bit about calendula. Let me know if you try the calendula balm out, I would love to hear your thoughts about it. And I hope you learnt something about the calendula plant. It is a wonderful plant, there's so many different varieties of it and so many different uses as well. So thank you so much for watching this video, I hope you're all having a lovely day wherever you are in the world. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video and make sure to subscribe for lots more garden and connecting to nature content. I hope you're all having a lovely day and until my next video, happy gardening everyone. Bye!